one of the compensations for going away from home is coming home again, where we received such a warm welcome. We left here on the 22nd of September for a quick trip to the Holy Land. And I, with respect to that, I'd like to speak for just a few moments. I shall not inflict upon you the travelogue, but will refer to some of the places we visited and the effects upon us of such visits. I was accompanied by Dr. Truman Grant Madsen of the BYU, who has taken many trips over there with various groups and knows the country well, and knows the story of the Christ remarkably well. The question arose as to the wisdom of my going on account of my weakened condition. Dr. Stricker, J. Lewis Stricker of this city, said he would personally accompany me and see that I was given good care. So with these two fine men, we left via New York and Paris and went to Tel Aviv. From there, we took an automobile down to Jerusalem and were booked in the Intercontinental Hotel on top of the Mount of Olives, which gives such a beautiful view of the Jerusalem. This Mount of Olives is made famous and sacred by the frequent visits of the Christ. And it is here that he is to come again. And this mount will be cleft in twain when his feet touch it. We went out from there to Bethlehem, of course. And as we stood in that beautiful, quiet little city, we thought we heard again the singing of the angels and the hosts of heaven, singing glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill to men. We thought of the <coughs> declaration of war, which was made by Beelzebub when this child was born. He seemed to have some knowledge of what, was, what it portends. And he declared war on this babe and all his followers. However, we went on from there up to the tomb of Abraham near the brook Cedron. And the next day went on to Jericho. You remember Jericho is that city where a military band must have played rather better than our bands do today, <laughs> as we understand because of the clarity of their horns, the walls of Jericho tumbled to the ground. On the way to Jericho, we passed through part made famous by the words of the master in answering the question, who is my neighbor? He told the story of the Good Samaritan, where a man had the courage to step over race barriers and assist one whom it was not lawful for him to help. On the way to Jericho, we passed by this place and the little inn there called the Good Samaritan. From Jericho, we went down through the river, river valley of Jordan, down to the Dead Sea, and from there up to the tomb the caves where the scrolls were found. It was a glorious trip, and upon returning to Jerusalem, we took it upon ourselves to go again into the Garden of Gethsemane. Here it was that Jesus suffered his greatest pain. Here it was he sweat drops of blood. And as he knelt there in the garden alone, his disciples, having remained outside, he said, oh God, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. I thought as I stood there and remembered those words, how wonderful it would be for all of us if we had the courage and the insight and the fortitude, whatever may happen to us, to say, not my will, but thine be done. That attitude makes any burden lighter. It makes any task less difficult. We went up through the 
Via Dolorosa Road, where he carried his cross up to Golgotha. We're told of that struggle, while there's a great deal of disputation and disagreement as to just where the events happened, something seems to be quite sure, and that is that he was crucified on this hill of skulls, as it's called. From there, we went down into the garden and into the tomb. As we stood by the door of that tomb, I remembered the women who came there with their spices. These women who were the last at the cross and the first at the tomb could not believe but that they would be permitted to anoint his body. But when they saw that he had gone, the stone had been rolled away, the attendants in the tomb said, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, he is risen. They could not comprehend the meaning of what they heard. And then Mary, turning, had a glimpse, doubtless the feet and ankles, of someone standing near. She thought it was the gardener. And she said, I have come to find the, the master. Tell me where you've laid him, and I'll take him away. Jesus reached forth his hand and said to her, in that voice which only he could use, Mary, and she was about to embrace him as she looked up and saw the face of Jesus the Christ. It was a remarkable feeling we had as we stood and remembered these things. And we, the three of us, had prayer each day, praying God to guide us on our journeys and help us to emulate the example of him who made that whole country so famous and so sacred. After visiting other places in Jerusalem, we went north starting from the Sea of Galilee. On the way up, we visited Mount Tabor, represented to be the Mount of the Transfiguration, where Moses and Elias met with Jesus and Peter, James, and John, and he was transfigured before them. As they stood on this mount, Christ instructed them, and Peter feeling it is a good place to be, said, let us build a tab tabernacle, one for Moses and one for Elijah and one for thee. That was not thought wise at the time, however. From Mount Tabor, we went on over the hill past Nazareth and came up on the Sea of Galilee. All of us gasped as we came over the hill and saw this beautiful little valley, green all around, a quiet lake, or sea, and as we came down to it and found our little <clears throat> accommodations near the hotel, we were impressed by the thought that here it was that Jesus walked on the water. Here it was that he stilled the tempest. Here it was that he performed many miracles. And then looking across one part of the sea, we saw the Mount of the Beatitudes, where it is alleged the Sermon on the Mount was preached. It was immensely impressive, and we went home that night with thanksgiving in our hearts that we belonged to the Church of Jesus Christ. He who led his people in that forbidding country and was led by them to the cross. Upon returning, we went down through Berry's Valleys. We saw the little cities on the hillsides as we on both sides of the road we were impressed as we came into nazareth it also is a city on a hill jesus lived there for a time and because of that fact he was known as the nazarene we went back into jerusalem and there day after day we visited points of interest in that great city I tell you, I tell you these things to indicate that the object of our visit was to get closer to him, to come home with increased devotion, increased commitment to his work, increased assurance that he is the Son of God. As Brother Anderson has told us this afternoon, Peter said what a lot of us would like to say, when Jesus asked him, Whom do you sayest thou that I am? He said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. 
Jesus said, Flesh and blood did not reveal that unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. I want to tell you, my brethren and sisters, as is my calling as a witness of Christ, that I too know, and I know it from the same source that Peter knew it, for flesh and blood has not revealed that knowledge unto me, but our Father which is in heaven. And from the bottom of my heart, I say to him and to you, as I look up and think back over our trip through the Holy Land, and I say, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, and I know it as I know that I live. God bless you, my brethren and sisters, and all of us, that we may devote ourselves to his work, to one another, that we may follow the example of those who have spoken in this great conference. Some of the sessions of the conference I, have, which I looked at in the television, and I remember the words of President Joseph Fielding Smith at the opening session when he gave the keynote address, advising the saints to follow in the footsteps of the Lord. Let us then at this closing session renew that plea and rededicate ourselves to the unfinished task of bringing to pass the immortality and eternal life of men. I bear this witness to you and bring you this report on my activities in the name of Jesus Christ, amen.